Hi there. My name's Barnaby and I'm an amateur guitar maker living in Tokyo. And what I'm going to do is take you through the build diary of a bass. Now I've never built a bass before, so this will be a learning experience for me. And first let me explain what I'm going to do. I've decided that I'm going to do a jazz bass style. So I kind of stuck together some plans from a PDF I found on the internet. And I'm making it with a few variations. First of all, I've got this large chunk of Japanese pine. It's called Matsu, this type of wood. It's a lovely wood. And it was actually originally a very big piece. It's already had three Telecaster bodies come out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three sections and they're then going to be planed and jointed together to make up my blank. They'll be offset so that they fit the different parts of the guitar and I'll explain more about that later. I should just, and I mean literally just, have enough wood to do this properly. I'm also going to use this piece of really nice hard maple and this is going to be the neck. And what's going to happen is I'm going to have my own headstock design and it'll be quite wide because it's going to be a five string neck. Um, I've always wanted a five string bass, I don't know why, I just kind of prefer them I guess. Um, and so what's going to happen then is that the neck will obviously be set a little further into the body. Also, uh, the lower horn will have a deeper cutaway and I'll probably shape the body a little more too. The fingerboard, recently I was walking past a lumberyard and I picked up this kind of plank of, well I, I don't know, it's a sort of reddish mystery wood and I figure that this should make a nice fingerboard, we'll see how it is anyway. Also with the neck, because it's a five string, it'll have carbon fiber reinforcement and a two-way truss rod. So it should be nice and strong as well as fairly light, I hope. Other things to mention, I don't know yet what I'm going to do with electronics. I may do a single humbucker, two humbuckers, I might uh, do two single coil pickups or some sort of combination. I could do a, a P-Bass style pickup or I might just decide to get active electronics. If I do passive, I will actually wind them myself. Obviously, if I do uh, actives, I'll just buy them. So that's the build plan for now. Uh, the other thing to mention is, of course, that everything will be done using hand tools. I live in a small apartment. My landlady lives next door. I can't really make a lot of noise, so hand tools are really my only option for this type of thing. So what I've done is I've marked up the blank. And I found, when I looked at the plans, that the middle section was about 435 millimeters. This wing section here was about 505 and then this lower section here could be done with a blank of 427. So I've marked those lines. I've literally got um, only a couple of millimetres to spare on each one, so I'm going to be cutting very precisely. Although I don't need to cut exactly to make a perfect replica of the base, of course, because I'm uh, modifying it anyway, and I'm not doing a clone. But what I do now is I take my blank, and I simply clamp it to my bench, like this, just lightly. Clamp it down on this side. And I'm using a Japanese pull saw with a rigid spine because it allows me to do a very, very precise cut. And when I cut with this, I lay my finger along the blade, I come in, it's a pull saw, so I can push slightly to get a groove to start off the cut, and then pull back. That saw 
That's a lovely, clean cut. It's really lovely. Beautiful job. Now it's time to join the pieces together. The most important one is this one here, which is the central block. And so what needs to be done here is that um, you need to get this edge so that it's perfectly flat and at 90 degrees to the side. And of course, the best tool for that, I think whether you've got a powered workshop or not, is the hand plane. And this hand plane is a number six. As you can see, it's almost exactly the same length as the piece. So what I'm gonna do is essentially simply run it over like that. Tighten that up. Take off shavings until we get to where we need to be. You can see here that's virtually perfect. Very tiny bit that needs to be taken off here. And if we check it with the set square, yeah, pretty much bang on. So here I am simply truing up the last side. And with this done, I'll then go on and glue up the blank. The point being that you want to glue up your blank as soon as possible ah, after this planing. So now all three parts are jointed uh, and ready for planing. And I've just checked it on the plan, made sure that everything lines up. All right, now it's time to glue up the blank. So I take some tight bond and I spread it on liberally. Okay. And then we do the same on our lower bout. You can see there the black lines I've got to get everything lined up properly. And we've got a nice little amount of squeeze out indicating that the joint is nice and tight. Whew. So after some fairly serious planing, we've got a blank now that is basically flat. We just flatten out this side a bit, although it doesn't need very much. And then we can put on our shape. <laughs> 